Hey everybody, Sports Live in the ATL doing this video while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, I'm going to do an upcoming video on uh, just the bad luck that the Braves go through. It seems like every time the Braves have a chance to win a World Series, we get injuries and stuff and it kind of derails uh, our momentum. But I'll talk about that on another video this week. I'm going to wait until after, I'm going to wait until Wednesday to do that, you know, after the trade deadline, you know, in a couple hours and see what happens. By the time you see this, Either the trade deadline has passed and the Braves did something, or it's it passed and the Braves didn't do anything, or whatever. But I will upload this. This right here is uh, why I don't watch the NBA. And I've had a couple discussions with people throughout the years. First off, I do watch the Atlanta Hawks. I love my team. It's an up-and-coming team. Trey Young, Jason Collins. If Jason Collins didn't fail his drug test last year, the Hawks would be in the playoffs. Clearly, there's no doubt in my mind. It seems like uh, the Hawks have uh, have their their staple in place, what they're building around. Got a lot of good young players who are growing together. Got some veterans in there, and uh, I really love the direction this team is going. So I'm always going to watch the Atlanta Hawks. But why I don't watch the NBA and I probably haven't watched them consistently in the last five or six years is because it's filled with egomaniacs overpaid egomaniacs the representation of the nba does not have a good image you know it'll have an image on certain things but for the most part it the image is not where it needs to be um the teams are very they build around once there's a team that gravitates and starts to win it builds around that one point it was lebron james and the Golden State Warriors. We all know the Warriors didn't make the playoffs, had a bad year because of a lot of injuries. But once Curry and Klay Thompson and all these guys and you know come back next year healthy, players are going to want to play and they're going to be riding Golden State like crazy. Everybody that's anybody who wants to play for a championship is going to go to Golden State just like Kevin Durant did. He couldn't beat them, so he joined them. If he could have, he would have joined LeBron James. LeBron James uh, bolted... Cleveland again I don't know what's wrong with you guys and embracing that guy he's I mean he's a great talent don't get me wrong one of the best in the world and very knowledgeable smart and respectful and classy off, off the court I give him that but he's an overpaid egomaniac you know it's like okay I'm gonna bolt Cleveland twice but if I want to come back they're gonna open me with open arms they're gonna accept me because I'm LeBron James I'm the king and then he goes over to L.A. and gets that bad franchise. Historically, the Lakers have been great. Obviously, we know with everybody that they've had in their history. Kareem Worthy, Magic Johnson, um, Scott, just to name a few. Pat Riley, head coach. Uh, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. The list goes on and on. But that team was floundering. And then he goes over there. Now everybody wants to go play over there. And now they're riding L.A., the Lakers, you know. What about players wanting to go play for James Harden in the Rockets? The Rockets are close. The Milwaukee Bucks, Toronto Raptors, why don't you guys want to go play over there? Why? It's because it's not what's best for the entertainment value. It's not what's best for ESPN. ESPN doesn't want to talk about Milwaukee or Toronto. They want to talk about Golden State, Klay Thompson, Stephen Curry, uh, LeBron James, and the Lakers. You don't see people broadcasting Milwaukee Bucks games, really. You don't see people doing Toronto Raptors. It's Lakers, Lakers, Lakers. You know, and then before that, it was Golden State, Golden State, Golden State, Golden State. What happened to the parity? What happened to giving teams a chance? Like, that's why I love the NBA in the 80s and 90s. You had a lot of good teams, a lot of good teams, and players wanted to spread themselves around. And go to these teams. That's why you had Pistons who won titles. The Bulls who won titles. Utah Jazz um, contending for titles. Portland Trailblazers. Houston Rockets throughout the years. It's because people wanted to be a part of it. People, even the Hawks. Hawks have had a lot of good players throughout their history. Just couldn't you know, take it over. And finally in 2014, we went to the Eastern Finals. But we got swept by LeBron and the Cavs. Nobody took the Hawks seriously, even though we beat uh, Milwaukee and Washington, I believe, in the playoffs that year. Had a really good team, but nobody really wanted to come to us down the stretch because they didn't believe that the Hawks were capable of winning it because they wanted to make sure 
that LeBron James and the Cavs had every opportunity to win an NBA championship, and then it was Golden State and Cleveland for like the four. I mean, how many years in a row did they go? It's a joke. It's a joke. It's all about. It, it, don't don't let the NBA fool you, everybody. It's about money. It's about money. It's about supporting the teams in the big markets and or and or if a team like Golden State, not in a huge market, has all these top players, the Splash Brothers. Everybody wants to go over there. Everybody wants to go over and play for LeBron. It makes me sick. It does. If you, I mean, it's their choice, right? But if you want to have parity and, you know, you should, I mean, you should give every team, especially really good teams, fair chances to win. And then if Golden State and Cleveland still win, it just proves that they are that much better. The only reason why Golden State throughout the years and the Cleveland Cavs and wherever LeBron goes are good, really good, is because... All the players of any note want to go play for those two, those, those two players, those two teams. And other good teams do not get a chance. So it's kind of an unfair balance. You know, it's kind of tilted one way, 70% to 30. It's not fair. It's not equal. That's why they didn't take the Hawks seriously. Oh, the Hawks had the, Hawks had the top team in the East. Yet, they never talked about the Hawks. They said, oh, okay, the Hawks are going to do this, but, but we all know once they play the Cavs and LeBron, they're going to get beat, which we did. Because players at the top, I mean, we had a lot of really good talent. Corver, uh, um, Al Horford, Paul Millsap, Schroeder. We had a lot of good players on the, on the team. But we didn't have superstars. Because all the superstars of other teams went to Cleveland and Golden State. So that's what I have a problem with. Stuff like that. Stuff like Houston. Stuff like Toronto and Milwaukee. You know, help these teams get better by being fair and equal. That's why I don't watch the NBA. It's stupid. It's watered down. It's egomaniacs, overpaid. And the rep of the NBA is not in a good place. That's just my own personal opinion. Uh, but I'm always going to watch the Atlanta Hawks. It's my team. And, and maybe one day the NBA will figure it out. I have not watched one game. I w not watched one game. I did not watch the playoffs. I did watch the playoffs when uh, Toronto won it because it was something fresh, you know, when they beat Golden State. But other than that, I, had, I didn't watch any anything other than the Hawks for like five or six years. Why? Because there's no, there's no equal balance. All the teams can put in all the effort they want during training camp, offseason, free agency, trades, drafts, whatever. But in the end, it's not going to matter because you always knew it would either be Cleveland or wherever LeBron is or Golden State. It's fact. The NBA is a horrible product. It's my opinion. It's not worth watching. And uh, until they change it, I will not watch. Unless it's the Hawks because I do support my team. That's all I got to say about that. Sports Live in the ATL, and I'm out.